just want to, we're, we, we're not going to be going for too, too long tonight, so we're actually going to accept four more questions, and there are four in line now. I'll start really quickly. Just with, uh, Thank you so much for coming here. I wanted to start with a question, and if you'll just indulge me very shortly, just um, wanted to dialogue with you about what you were saying about the solution. First, in terms of the problem, my question is, who are these people who are asking for ideological, you know, who want to take over and want to establish the caliphate? Because, and I'm really sincere when I ask this question, because I haven't met them, and I don't think that, um, you know, I'd like to know who these people are. We both speak about that. But also, also, how useful is it to call it Islamic totalitarianism? The reason I ask that is I come here as a person of goodwill and sincere goodwill that, you know, I wanted to meet Daniel Pipes because I'd heard so much about him. I'm sorry I hadn't heard of you. I was so worried. I even prayed too. I even prayed before I came here. And you seem like such a sincere, reasonable person. And I'm sure your parents are so proud of you. And I also, as an American, I want to be, you know, I, I hope someday, God willing, my parents are in the audience and I'm speaking. But my concern is, in terms of when you say the, my fear, rather, is that sometimes I get the sense, not from your reason tone here, but some of the actions that I see, and I mean that sincerely, is that a good Muslim is someone who says Islam is bad. And that, I think, is problematic because I'm someone, as an American, I stand for values of this country. I love this country, and I stand for freedom of speech and all of the things that you believe in. This is why I'm here. But at the same time, what makes my job difficult as a Muslim and what hurts me in my heart of hearts is someone who is passionate about Muslim-Jewish dialogue, about building a greater society for all of us, is the fact that when, when, when I see that there are things that are used to manipulate or to misconstrue Muslims who mean well, that makes my job harder. So I'd like to get an idea from you what you mean by good Muslim, because sometimes, I have to be honest with you, I was working in New York for many years. I get the sense from some of the rhetoric and actual practical things that a good Muslim is a Muslim who says Islam is bad. And I'm not one of those Muslims. I am someone who loves America, and I love my religion, just like everyone else. So if you could please answer that, I would appreciate it. I have never said that a good Muslim is a Muslim who says Islam is bad, and I would uh, repudiate that now. It, I would say, I'm not going to define what a good Muslim is, but let, let me take it from a different angle. I think the Muslim community can be divided into three. There are those who are clearly the enemy, Al-Qaeda, its ilk, whose violence and extreme rhetoric and so forth, they're clearly our enemy. I think we can all agree on that. And then there are Muslims who are clearly on our side in this war, who are patriotic, who are integrated, Sounds like you are. You love being American, you love religion, fine. But then there's a middle group, which is problematic. And that is a group that agrees with the goals of Al-Qaeda, but doesn't use violence. What I've dubbed lawful Islamists, some call soft jihadists, there are many different terms, stealth jihadists and the like. And this is where the debate is. This is the debate on the university campus and the media in government. Uh, this is my concern about infiltration and penetration. It's not with individuals who are going to blow things up. Yeah, we all agree on that as a problem, but with individuals whose ultimate goal is to bring about uh, the application of Islamic law, and who seek to do this in lawful, political, acceptable means. Someone raised the New York school. I've done some research, and I found that there are a number of schools, public schools and charter schools, in other words, schools with taxpayer money, that are clear infringement on the separation of church and state, and that are advocating for Islam. And perhaps the most clear of all is in Minneapolis, the Tariq Ibn Ziyad Academy, which has, from what one can tell, a, an Islamic tenor to it in terms of dress code and prayer rooms and after school activities and uh, kitchen and schedule. It's, a, it's, it's not a public, it's not what we would normally consider to be a public school or charter school. It goes way beyond that. I see that as very, very important because I see that as infiltration of Islamic law through 
political means. And I am more worried, actually, about this infiltration of Islamism through political means than I am through uh, violence. And it's hard for me to imagine a scenario by which the Islamists take over through violence. Violence can be an accessory to this political means. For example, after the 7-7 bombings in London, some groups of Islamists went to minister, ministerial offices and said, see, if you don't listen to us, this is the consequence. So there's a certain uh, utility to, the, to the terrorism. But fundamentally, the, the lawful Islamists are working in, within the system in, in an acceptable way. And there is the great debate. Uh, there are those, you know, my views now, but there are those who argue that lawful Islamists, in fact, are on our side and are helpful and are a buffer against the violent ones. And this is where the great debate takes place. And this is where the acrimony takes place. And I can cite you, within the last month, a number of uh, disputes I've been in on this concerning schools, concerning uh, national organizations, concerning individuals. This is where the great debate is. And I hope that we will come to a conclusion that, that just because you work within a system doesn't make you a friend. Uh, to give a, another analogy, the French Communist Party worked within the system. It didn't mean that we wanted it to uh, ascend to power. It didn't mean it was on our side in the Cold War. It worked within the system. It wasn't the Soviet Communist Party, but it wasn't our friend. So this is, I think, the great, the great ideological and legal and political battle ahead of us, is, seek, is seeking an understanding of where, how to understand law for this and, and this is where much of my time is taken up fighting these fights over small things, over taxi cabs, over schools, over swimming pools, and the like. Because I think those are the battlegrounds that are, that, are, that are shaping this country and other Western countries' position vis-a-vis, -vis, so to sum up, vis-a-vis -vis, uh, lawful Islam. To sum up, I'm a no, no, I, I say nothing about Islam. I do not, I don't say anything about Christianity or Judaism or Buddhism. I don't talk about religions. I don't, I don't, uh, judged religions. What I'm looking at is a political ideology, which I see as ugly, uh, dangerous, and I'm fighting it. And I welcome, and let me repeat again, I welcome Muslims who are part of that fight. And there are Muslims who are part of that fight. And they're increasingly coming out of the woodwork. There are many more Muslims who are taking a stand on this, on this issue than there were a decade ago. Many more Muslims are saying, okay, I've had enough. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make it known how I feel. And in particular, one sees that in Europe, where there are increasingly vocal Muslim individuals and groups are taking a stand on these issues and saying, no, we don't want Islamism. And I welcome that. I see it's crucial. Just so my silence is misconstrued. Um, <laughs> I, I completely agree. I don't, I, but I, to, to, to point out, uh, I don't believe there's, there's any difference between a good Muslim, a good Christian, a good Jew, a good atheist. The, the, the evaluation is whether you as a person, as an individual, are a good person or a bad person. Some people are bad. Some people are good. Uh, you know, we can discuss what are the, what are the criteria by which one evaluates good people or bad people, but, it, you know, but the fact that, uh, that you're a Muslim is not, you know, doesn't tilt it one way or the other. 